Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. There's going to be a lot of fun on the show. Today, Izzy, Wizzy, let's get busy. <laughs> I don't want all that, I'll be honest with you. That'd be greedy. <laughs> oh, I can't give you another penny, I'm sorry. Opinions, opinions, opinions. Everybody has got opinions. She has dramatically reduced its value. I think he should have taken my money. This piece will end up one place, and I think it's called my garage. Today the show comes to you from Northwich in Cheshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They've come here looking for the real deal. It's going to be fun and games in the den today, and who better to kick things off than James Late? Well, this looks like an interesting box of tricks, literally. Um, be very interested to see what what goes on inside when we've when we've unpacked it. I'd like to get about 100 to 150 pounds, and I think James might be nice, but I'm not sure if he'll be interested. Magic wand you've got here. Time to get that magic off. wand out then. Abracadabra. It really works. <laughs> Didn't know I had magic powers. So what have we got? Uh, it's a magician's box. A magician's box, probably mostly 1920s. So what's the history of it? Well, I don't really know much history about the box, but I used to work on Portobello Market for a lady who owns a fashion label. Yeah. And um, she had a shop and it was sort of circus themed. And when the shop closed, she gave it me as a gift. Uh, have you been practicing the tricks? No. No, none of them, <laughs> none of them. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, they look fascinating, don't they? I used to see versions of these in, you know, when I was a kid in the 50s. But I, I'm sure these are 1920s. And look, this original dancing Charlie illusion, Charlie Chaplin. There's a mathematical puzzle there. These look like kind of Chinese puzzles. All sorts of things. Why are you selling it? Next year I'm going to do teacher training. So I'm not going to have any salary or anything next year. So I'm trying to save so up as much money as I You need all, all the money you can get? Yes. Yeah. Let's put some money on the table. Okay. See if we can magic up a yes. I should think 20, 40, 60 quid. Is that magic enough? No. 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 <laughs> okay. Let's try another one of those. 80 pounds. So, ah. what do we think, Lucy? Just like that? Or <laughs> it's almost. <laughs> I have to smile. It's obviously an entertainer, a conjurer's kit. Uh, it's almost an Ali Bongo set, isn't it? Yeah, almost, yeah. Um, we have two quite different estimations here. We have an, an 80 to 120, and then we've got a 2 to 300. Now, wow. I think the 2 to 300 might be a little ambitious, but I have to say it's very comprehensive. There's a lot of it. Now, what's that one, James? No, that steady holding? on, steady on, David. I could easily turn you into a frog okay, if okay. you don't agree with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's very, very interesting. I think £80 is not a bad offer. Maybe it's worth a little bit more. Okay. Izzy, Wizzy, let's get busy. <laughs> Put a bit more money on. <laughs> okay, um, let's put another 20 down. That's, that's 100. So how do you feel about that? I still think I could get a little bit more. A little bit more, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll try you one more then. And that really is my lot, 110. Um, another five? Another five? I don't really deal in fives, I'll have a look. Maybe one will magically appear. Oh, yes it does. <laughs> so 115. Have we got a deal? Okay, a deal. Brilliant. Thank you very much for bringing Thank it along. Thank you. <laughs> I'll have to make it all magically disappear in a minute. I am happy with um, the deal and I think if I'd gone to auction I may have got maybe a little bit more but it would have to be the right buyer there on the day so um, yes I'm pleased. You must have cast a spell over James so well done Lucy. Hello, Mark. Mark Stevens Mark, is nice next and about to come face to face with Albert, who's come with his very own Victoria. I uh, brought along a sovereign, uh, it's 89 sovereign, it's around 200 to 240, that's the region, so somewhere in excess of 200 would be good. Well, you bought me in a Victorian Jubilee Head sovereign here. Can you tell me anything about it? 
Well, it's one of the time I acquired us when my mum died and we were breaking up the house and sorting out various things and I found a box with a few items of jewellery in, of which this was one of the things. Right, OK. With these sovereigns in the Victorian period, they had three heads on them. Right. She came to the throne in 1837 mm -hmm. and she started with the young head, or as some people like to call it, the bun head, because on the back of her head she had it up and there was a bun. Yeah. Then the Jubilee year, which was 1887, they changed the head and it went on to this head here, which is called the Jubilee head. Right. And yeah. then in the 1890s, we changed it to our old head. Now, some people call it the widow head because she had a veil on. And that carried on right through to the end of her reign when she died in 1901. And in 1902, Edward VII took over. And obviously, we had Edward VII's mm. head on the coins. A lot of these coins really are based on their bullion content. Mm. They can be worth more money if they are in very good condition. Mm -hmm. The condition of this is only standard to be perfectly honest with you mm. that's the reason why i'm going to base my price on the bullion content it weighs eight grams mm -hmm. of 22 karat gold i mean if you were to sell it what would you do with the money well i've got a grandson and it would go towards his isa trust fund like so oh, nice investment investing early absolutely so haven't you thought about giving him that as an investment rather than the isa uh, it did cross our mind i must admit <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think there's only really one thing to do is put some money on the table. Do you agree? Sounds good. Right, let's see what I've got. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds. Hmm. I was expecting a bit more than that, I have to say. Yeah, well, it's. I think what we have to remember is gold is not as strong as it has been so that is reflected in my bid well you know we're kind of getting it all right let's see what i've got let's see 170 pounds mm, no i was expecting more than i'd have to say mm. so it's 170 if i take away the 10 180 pounds can you buy some tax round uh, Okay, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. £190. Albert, have we got a deal? It's a deal. Thank you very much indeed, Albert. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up, there could be trouble ahead. Flowers going in there has been the problem. The wife washing the bowl afterwards. Well, you shouldn't have let her have to go, go near him, Paul. I know. She's ruined it, haven't oh, she? she has. But has that spoiled Paul's chances of striking a deal? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Northwich in Cheshire. Over on Tim Hogarth's table, Paul has brought along a couple of vases by renowned Lancashire-based glassblower John Ditchfield. But his house-proud wife might have unknowingly affected the price. I paid £80 per vase, but unfortunately the wife has been washing them and there's a little chips on one of the vases so therefore I understand that the value is going to be a lot less. I'm interested in one of them and for the, the smaller one of the two I would like to pay £50 for it. You're not off to the best start Paul but we're keeping everything cross for you. We bought two pieces of Ditchfield glass long today. Yeah. Are you a collector? I have been. I've collected quite a few pieces over the years. Um, these pieces I actually acquired from the pub. From <laughs> um, the pub? Yeah. Um, I've got a little pub in, in North Wales mm. and one of the gentlemen that used to come in used to be a, a dealer and he used to come in offering his bits and bobs like this. And the wife's had enough of them now I think. I share. It's time to, to move them out of the house. If we just have a look at one of them, we've got here the J. Ditchfield. John Ditchfield is what we would call a contemporary glass designer in the sort of art glass style. I mean that is Look. lovely. This one, the bigger one, has got some issues hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. When, when we look around it on this band in here it's got some damage there. Flowers going in there has been the problem. The wife washing the bowl afterwards. Well, you shouldn't have let her have to go, go near him, Paul. I know, what a, what a mistake. Honestly, <laughs> she has dramatically reduced its value. Yeah, 
but if you think about it, if you put it against the wall like that, there is no damage, is there? Yeah, it's but lovely, Paul, I'm not going to put it against them. I'm going to try yeah. and sell it, Paul. Oh, I can just imagine it now with the flowers all in it. Oh, yeah. What a piece. Lovely. I thought you were a publican, not an interior decorator. I'm actually in it. An interior exterior designer, or better known as a painter and decorator. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, Paul, I'm going to make you an offer. I don't want all that, I'll be honest with you. That'd be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what, Paul? You're not going to get I all that. <laughs> do you know, for some reason, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> 50 pounds. Right, so you're interested in this one over here for £50? No, I'm interested in this one here for £50. I want to buy that. I don't want to buy that. Because that damage, I know that I will not be able to sell it. Now, Paul, you are in a very enviable position here. All right. Do you know why? Because you can sell an item and you can put an item in auction unprecedented on Dickinson's real deal. Right, so we know this one's going to auction because you don't want this one. At the moment, that's looking very lonely by itself and I'm sure that for £50, it's like it doesn't want to part with his friend, does he? The glass bars is pop. <laughs> Are we going to put a little bit more money down on the table there? Because I think it's... Well, just for that a, tail, it, I've got to put a bit more money down, haven't I? What about £60 for this one? No, no. It really does need a little a little bit more prizing. Look, I tell you what, Paul, because I like you and we're having a laugh. And you're a nice man. And I'm a nice man. £70, pounds, Paul. £70 pounds and this one goes off to auction. That's the deal. Go on, I'll take that deal, man. Thank, Thank you very, much, very much, Thank you, Tim. I was, wasn't disappointed that Tim didn't buy both because at the end of the day, I realised that he's a dealer and he, he wants to make and sell things in proper up or working order. I think that the other Ditchfield bars will it will sell in the auction. It's a big item and it, it will make 30 or 40 pounds, definitely. There's only one way to find out. So let's remain positive as we head to the auction. What did you pay for the two pieces when you bought them, when they were in perfect condition? I think I paid 80 pound a piece. So about 160 quid. Mm. So basically, we're a little bit behind, and I presume even today, once this is sold, we're still going to be behind, but that's what happens if you damage something. Now, there's no reserve on it because no. it's damaged. It's a question of throwing it open, not throwing it literally, but putting it open to the floor and saying, OK, how much will you give for the damage bars? You've already got your 70. You were happy with that? Yeah, good deal. Let's just see if we can get a few more pounds for the damage bars. It is coming up now. Here we go. What may we say for it? Give me a starter at 30 pounds on it. 30 pounds anywhere now for this at 30 pounds. 30 pounds only at 30. 30 bits straight away. Not that's bad. 30, 30 pounds 40, in the room. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. Come on now, 65. It's a 65 pounds. Bits here. 60 pounds, the bits there at 60. Can it be sold at 60 pounds then? Last chance at 60 then being sold. You've got it, 60 pounds. 60 pounds under the gavel. We've got some commission to take off. I make that just under 50 quid, about 49 pounds. Now, that must be a bit of a surprise to you. I am actually. I was, I was expecting about five pounds. Well, I'm going to say I was surprised also for something that was damaged. Our expectation was low. So on the day, the real deal was here at 60 quid. You're going home with 49 pounds. Perhaps now you can say to your wife, don't worry about yeah. it. We got most of the money back, and so nothing to worry about. Real deal, here in the sale room. That's right, David. Add that to the £70 Tim paid earlier, and it's not bad, all things considered. Back in the den, Evan, Lynn hopes to I'm strike yeah, gold nice to with Jan you. Keen. I've seen Jan on TV before. She seems fair and reasonable, and hopefully, she will give me somewhere around 160, 180. Well, I don't think it's rocket science to ask you what you bought in today, but would you like to tell me a bit about them, their background? My husband's bought me the four of them for birthdays, anniversaries. Don't particularly like them anymore. They're sitting in a box. You're not going to wear them? You look as if you're more into silver, with your silver brooch and your necklace. Yeah, 
I do wear a lot of gold as well, but I think you can mix gold and silver together, so it yeah, doesn't really matter. Can. But those are not not my style no more. No, no. I like them heavier. I like them a lot bigger as yes. well. Yes, they're fairly light. Yeah. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that because they're nice and light to wear for every day. I've got some more with um, gem sets into them as well, into the bar bracelet. Oh, that's nice. So, it makes it a little bit more unusual. Yeah, and I've never worn that. No. I don't like it. It almost looks like a little Albert, but then I suppose that's the design of it, but obviously it just looks through there. And if I look through my glass, I can quite clearly see a 37 yeah. five mark which obviously denotes exactly. nine carats i understand there's 21 grams yes there is of gold yes so if you manage to sell them today anything particularly you're going to do with the money i've got two grown-up lads one's just got married and they're expensive especially when they get married oh yes and three grand kill oh. so, it's going to be boys. shared out you might get a chocolate bar. <laughs> so shall I put some money on the table and see if we can come to an agreement? Yeah. It's 50, 100, 150. Even what at Strap the Weird more than that though. So if I say 170. Can you offer a little, little bit more? 10 pound. So if I put another tenner down, we've got a deal. Yeah. Well, so at 180, yeah. we have a deal? We do, if that's all right with you. Well, thank you very much that's indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I actually got more than I thought I was going to get anyway. And my grandkids are now going to have a lovely box of chocolates between them. Fair Coming up, so, is there a hold up on James's table? You've got a long way to go. Yet, Have I? Yeah. I don't know whether I want to go that much further. Find out if he bites the bullet after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. These next items are sure to make James stand, but will he deliver? David, tell us more. I purchased the, uh, the pair of pistols about four years ago and I gave £1,100 for them at the time and uh, I suppose I'm looking somewhere for them for about £1,250 to £1,500. That'll do nicely, thank you. I'm going to try to buy them. Um, I'd like to pay sort of £600, £700, that sort of thing for them, but we'll see. Maybe less, maybe more. Well, let's hope it's more. But don't worry, as the Duke and auctioneer Robert Stones are watching closely. So you brought along um, a pair of pistols, yes? Indeed. Even I know that. You can spot I'm that. I'm not really a military man. Fair enough. So, tell me about them. Uh, they're made by a chap called Hickin from Birmingham. Uh, it was around from 1814 to the 1820s. So, dated to about the 1820s? We think the 20s, yeah. Yeah, right. So these are percussion cap, I, I know that much. Yep. You put a ball in and some powder. Well, or powder first. Powder first. Then a wad, then a, a ball. Then a ball. And you ram it all down with ball that. ball ram it down tightly and uh, the last thing you do is put the cap on. And this is walnut? We think, I think it would be walnut, The stock yes. and, the, and the handle. Are you a collector of pistols? Yes, I do have a, a small collection. So what's wrong with these? Nothing, I just want to acquire <laughs> some flintlock pistols. Right, okay. So flintlocks presumably will cost you quite a bit more than, than, than these, yeah. Robert, what appears to be a nice pair of early 19th century percussion cap pistols. Yeah. Now, one of our specialists looked at those and had a bit of doubt. Could they have been originally produced as flintlock and then converted. They did convert a lot of them. Flintlock was considered to be less efficient. So I think perhaps we'd like to take further advice just to make sure that they haven't been converted because it does make a difference on value, okay. of course. Robert, where are you going to place an estimation on these? We're saying about 12, 1,500 pounds for them. They are commercial things at the moment and they look good, don't they? Nice color. They do. Yeah. Now, James is a good dealer. I'm not sure this type of merchandise is for him, but he likes a quality lot. Let's see what he puts on the table. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 
300, 350, 400. You've not bought one of them yet, James. <laughs> oh, just, just, just testing. <laughs> 450, 470, 490, 510, 530, 550. Still not enough. No, there's no one here enough. Mm. Okay, one, two, three, four, six fifty. One, two, three, four, seven fifty. You've got a long way to go yet. Have I? Yeah. Wow. I don't know whether I want to go that much further. Um, one, two, three. 850, David. Now, James, now. Yeah, are you in profit yet? Not yet, no. You're not? No. I think we better get David in at this point. Yeah. Right, David, what's on the table? I think it's 850. 850, 850 yeah. Right. Well, the independent valuers and the auctioneers, they're 1,000 to 1,200, they're 12 to 50. If these are right, and if they are percussion, which they appear to be, I think at auction they'll do a little bit better. Mm. But if they have been converted, as we all know, it can affect items like this dramatically. Mm. And because of that, I'm going to say, put it to the room. Let the specialists have a look at it. They'll soon tell you whether they're right or not. Bear in mind, there's a 15% commission at an auction. But even with the deduction of that, I think we could do it a little bit better. They look quite clean. Mm. Well, James, you're going so to there make we another are. offer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll carry on. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 950. Yeah. Now, James, still, still enough. Still a bit more. I think I'm going to stop there, David, because I'm not familiar enough with the pistol market to go any higher, frankly. I think I'll chance it at auction. Okay. Thank you, James. You sure about that? I'm positive. Right. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to let them go, but tell me, how much did you pay for them? I gave £1,100 for them. Did you? Yes. Well, you know, if, it, if they make £1,100 at auction, you're only going to get 950 True. Good luck, David. Thank Hope you, you very, do very much, well. James. <laughs> All the best. Thank you. They're shaking hands, they're coming to the auction. Yeah. I think he's determined to try and get his money back. Can you help him? We're going to do our best, David. I love a challenge, you know that. <laughs> yes, I feel uh, James could have had his Dick Turpin mask on with the pistols, but uh, I don't think James really wants to buy them, so off to the auction with them. I think he should have taken my money, because I don't think he's going to make much more in auction taking off the expenses. So I think mine was a good shot. The pistols have been inspected more closely at the auction house and the latest discovery could have an impact. Since they arrived in the sale room with a reserve of £1,400, they were looked at by specialist dealers. They in turn thought that they had been changed um, from flintlock to percussion and they advised our auctioneer to drop the reserve to twelve hundred pounds. Now you were not happy with this. Not really. No. You want to stay with the fourteen hundred quid, yes. even if it means possibly they don't sell. You don't mind? No. Okay. No. I hear what you're saying. Now, no. now you bought them a few years ago from a dealer. Yeah. Was that put to you when you bought them that they had been converted from flintlock to percussion? No. But I mean, I looked at them and I thought they just looked too good to be converted. Well. We looked yeah. at them the same and we thought exactly, we weren't sure, are they going to make it? Coming up now. At £900, a bid's with me at £900 and a thousand now surely do I hear? At £1,000, £1,200, £1,200 is the now. At £1,100, a bid at £1,100, all quiet and done. They've stopped at £1,100. Any further bids at £1,100, all quiet and done. Can't take the price, I'm afraid, so we move on to the next lot. They passed the items, they didn't make the 1400 reserve. Is that a bit of a disappointment to you? A little bit, David, but uh, it's not the end of the world. It isn't. Anyway, hey, hey, you're taking them home, there's always another day. Real deal, it was with James Late, £950. 
Back in the den, Cellar David has brought in an unusual weapon, but will Mark have a stab at it? It's a very modern item. I think it's just purely a furnishing piece. Very hard thing to price. Um, it certainly isn't going to be a lot of money. I think possibly below £50. I acquired it about three weeks ago from a charity shop for £15. Well, ideally, I'd like to get around, around £100 for it, which would go towards buying a, a, a new bike for my son for his birthday. Oh dear, this doesn't bode well. Do your best, David. You've bought me in a halberd, which is a, a form of weapon. What can you tell me about it? Well, you're quite right in its name. It's um, a medieval weapon. Um, mm -hmm from the 14th, 15th century. I think it's 15th, 16th. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. I believe they were used for knocking covermen off horseback. Um, a very skilled weapon, apparently, in its day. And um, this, I believe, to be a reproduction because it's not got any sharp edges. And the design, I think, may be German. I'm not sure. Right. Well, you've got it spot on. This piece here was used to put round the man on horseback and pull him off and also to chop in with here. So you, you've got it exactly right. In my opinion, it's a, I class this as, as a furnishing piece. Right. I think it's been made in the last 40 years. If we look, the leather here with the brass beading around it, it's typical of that 1960s copy period that we get with these weapons. I've seen them before. I've seen that before, Yeah, right. and if we look at the, the actual staff here, just when we look at it, it tells me straight away it has no great age, which is a real shame because an early one of these would be very sought after and very collectible. Right, so I think the only thing really to do now is to put some money on the table. So let's see what I've got. If we don't have a deal with it for any particular reason, you're not going to hit me with it, are you? No, definitely not. <laughs> I'm not the violent type. Because <laughs> I still think this could do quite a bit of damage, even though it's a reproduction. Um, <sighs> £10, £20, £30, David. Now, how does that sound? It's a fair start, but I was hoping for some a bit more than that because I've got my son's birthday coming up and he needs a new bike. Um, and that might just buy a wheel. <laughs> so, a little bit more, please, if possible. Oh. You know, so this is a real dilemma for me because I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. So David, I think this is a good point to bring David in. Do you agree? Yeah, that'd be interesting to see what he says. I've got a smile on my face because I'm thinking, well, if only it was gold. <laughs> He's the man for the job, isn't he? What we've got here is very apparent. It's reproduction, but the estimation is 20 to 50, 40 to 60. So I'm going to say, if it was me, I'd have his 30 pounds because I think in auction, you might struggle to get that. So your decision, but I think 30 pounds, not a bad price. You know, it's entirely up to you, David. I don't know really there, what else to say. Is there any chance you could squeeze you for £10 for the safety helmet for the bike? David, as much as I would love to, I can assure you that I think this piece will end up one place. And I think it's called my garage. <laughs> I cannot see me selling it. But you've come here, I've put £30 on the table. And believe me, I can't give you another penny, I'm sorry. We'll deal at £30. Are you sure? Yeah. Give yeah. us your hand. Thank pounds. you very much. That's great. Tell me, David, how much did you pay for this? £15. £15? So that's £15 profit? Yeah, yeah, well, it's a £15 profit. If I make £15, I would be over the moon. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wish you well with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to try and put the money to good use and perhaps I'll buy me son a unicycle instead now. <laughs> Doubling your money can't be all bad. Coming up, is Jan going to be able to buy these Royal Worcester vases? At 250, does it tempt you to part with them? I'd like to see what happened in the auction. Find out where these beauties end up after the break. What an eventful day, and there are still more sellers turning up. So let's get over to James's table, where it's Valerie's turn. But why has she brought a friend along? We think James is a bit scary, so I brought my friend along today. And we hope that between the two of us, oh, we yes. can beat a good price out on him. Hopefully, hopefully you will do. 
Oriental hand warmer. I don't think I've ever owned one before. Do I want to own one now? I think I do. So you brought along um, a Chinese, possibly packed on um, hand warmer or foot warmer. It's Chinese. I suspect it's probably late 19th century, 1880 to 1900. What would happen is that you have burning charcoal in here right. and then it would be placed either under the table to keep your feet warm or you might have had it on a table to keep your hands warm perhaps during yeah. a tea ceremony or something like that so how have you why have you got it i inherited it from my father mm -hmm. after he retired he did travel quite a bit yeah. mainly europe mm. and picked a few silver items up which i've subsequently inherited yeah. right unfortunately uh, this isn't silver no it isn't i thought mm. it was actually mm. although i couldn't find a whole mark yeah. but I, I polished it like silver i must admit well you can i mean yes. tong is it's a, a mixture of metals but instead of it being bronze it has much more zinc in it which gives it this kind of white color which look, looks like looks silver. like silver yeah. yes so you don't have any sentimental attachment no. you're happy to sell it i think so what, yes what, if are you, the... what are you going to spend the money on um well Person, my grand person. my little grandson is going on holiday next week to tenerife and i would like ah. to give them some money to spend on holiday mm. would be very nice yeah all right we'll put some money on the table and see see if we can tempt it away from you um i'd like to offer you 20 40 60 pounds for it oh no no, oh. no. Well, Ruth has said no before you did. No. It's not even hers. No, no. I'm just looking out for my best friend. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Eighty. A hundred. No. A bit more. Ah, a bit more. More than that. Mm. I'm not going to go very much more than that because they're not hugely desirable things. I mean, it's it's a nice enough object, mm. but I'll put one more of those down. So that's. 120. What do you think about that? What do you say, Ruth? Yes, I will tell you. Tell Ruth you. says yes. I, I say yes. Thank so you. it's a deal then? It's a deal. Thank Thanks you. very much for bringing it along. <laughs> okay, I thank think you've you cost me money, Ruth. I'm sure I have, yes. I'll let you off. <laughs> okay. It wasn't really fair, was it? Two against one and 120 is a top price, but I think there's a little profit left in it. James wasn't as scary as I thought he would be. No, we did really well, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. very happy about that. Yeah. There you go, Val. You had nothing to worry about. Last, but by no means least, it's Laura's turn to sit down with Jan. She's brought in some Royal Worcester vases and has a clear idea of what she wants. I know that the, the market isn't as good as it was, but um, I'd like to get a minimum of 400 for them. They're a pretty enough pair of Royal Worcester. I think I'll be hazarding a guess at what to put down. Probably about the 300 mark, maybe a little more. Can they bridge the gap and do a deal? So would you like to tell me all about these vases? Um, well, they, they were my grandparents. Um, my grandmother collected Royal Worcester and my father inherited it when they passed away. He lives out in Greece now and I'm going to be going and living there, you know, sometime soon. So while I'm here, I want to um, clear them for him. Well, they're very pretty. I didn't realise, actually, till I sort yes. of stood back a little yeah. bit, that they're not an exact pair, one slightly bigger That's than right. the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're the same number, apparently. Yes. They're the same uh, shape number. Very close. And if we see underneath here, we can see quite clearly the mark for Royal Worcester and the registration number. Mm. And I think they're probably sort of 1890s. Mm. Obviously, being Royal Worcester, no doubt about it, the finest quality. So, obviously, you're not going to tell me what you're looking for, so I'm going to have to feel my way a yeah. little. So, there's 100. Two hundred. What do you think about that? It's fair, but looking for a bit, more. a bit more. Than that. Well, supposing I put two thirty down. Is that going to be tempting enough for you? Not really. Not really. It's fair, but I would have liked a bit more. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll scoop those away, and I'll put down another crisp. 50. 
at 250. What do you feel about that? Does it tempt you to part with them? A little. I'd like to see what happened in the auction, you know. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll cut to the chase and I'll go to 300. And I'll say, if you're happy to deal with that, I'll deal with you. Otherwise, I think you can go to auction with them. Who knows, you might do better, I don't know, on the day. So I think I'm I, happy with that. You happy to deal? I think so, yeah. That's 300? Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Despite the 400 that I was looking for, I took the 300 and I'm very pleased about that and Jan was great to deal with. They're absolutely perfect, pretty enough. There are lots of collectors out there. I'm sure I'll be able to sell them on at my next fair. Laura lowered her expectations, but is still Thank going home much. happy. Thank you. Thank you. Are our dealers as happy with what they've bought? Mark wasn't that confident about buying the weapon. I think this piece will end up one place, and I think it's called my garage. <laughs> well, it didn't, but it was bittersweet, as although he sold it, he also lost out. But at least he did make his money back on the gold sovereign. James thought the odds were stacked against him when it came to the hand and foot warmer. It wasn't really fair, was it? Two against one. But he still turned it around and made a small profit. And just like that, the box of magic tricks appeared. He conjured himself up a deal for £115, and quicker than he can say, hey presto, he sold them on. And Tim knew exactly what he was doing when he rejected one vase, but bought the other. £70 and this one goes off to auction. That's the deal. His judgement was spot on. But it was Jan who showed the boys how it's done. First, there was the gold chains that she turned into a quick profit. And then she picked the vases up for the exact figure she had in mind. I'll cut to the chase and I'll go to 300. And again made herself a few extra quid. Way to go, Jan. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.